So it's my privilege to introduce our next speaker, who is Dr. Barb Doty. She is the clinical dean for Alaska WAMI and a WAMI graduate herself. She graduated in 1982. She's practiced family medicine for over 20 years in the Matsu Valley. She works with students with Trust, Right, and Muop, all part of our clinical programs. And we'll be talking to you about the importance of the interview as part of the admissions process in WAMI. Dr. Doty. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, wow, that was a lot of information. For those of you that are looking at this journey, uh, I hope it wasn't overwhelming. Um, is my speaker working okay? Could be a little louder. I'm uh, not sure how to make the volume up, but uh, I'll speak louder. How about that? <laughs> That's perfect. There you go. Uh, so what a journey. You decide you maybe want to go to medical school and maybe that was something you thought about as a, as a kid growing up or maybe you explored uh, health sciences and decided that was a path you'd like to take and you completed your prerequisites, worked hard, you explored medicine as a career by shadowing, by uh, uh, talking to other folks, by spending time as a, as a scribe. Uh, and then you widened your skills and uh, identified what the role of being a service-oriented uh, clinician might be. And, and then you took the MCAT and then you uh, Googled the websites of the medical schools you're interested in and realized that Whammy was your state medical school and might allow you to stay in Alaska for most of your training. And then you applied to the University of Washington School of Medicine and you forgot what that website was. So you just Googled UW School of Medicine and boom, there it said admissions. So you followed the pathway from there. And you got all the way through the process. They looked at your application, you submitted it on time. You got your MCAT done before September so that it could get submitted by this September 30th. You got your AMCAS application done early enough so that if there were any, any hiccups, you could fix them. And then you got requested to be a supplement app applicant, uh, which has a hard deadline of December 1st that you submitted well before that. And then you confirmed that you were an Alaskan resident and you got an invitation to interview. And now the question is, how do I interview and what do I expect? So I'm gonna see if Christine can pull up my slides there and I'm gonna go through four or five slides just to help you with what does it mean to interview for medical school? And more specifically, um, this is applicable to any professional school if you're gonna interview. So uh, I just, just wanna point that out. It, it can be very intimidating to think about interviewing. And most of us uh, you know, think about the idea of an interview previously, uh, that was face-to-face, -face, that you dressed up in your most professional clothes, that you prepped ahead of time and you showed up. Now we're doing interviews by, by virtual uh, Zoom, and uh, that can pose some other issues related to how do I present myself best uh, as an interviewer. Um, I'm going to just review a couple of things that, uh, that Stella was uh, shared with us about the interview, just to reiterate and, and uh, confirm. So the Alaskan cohort is interviewed as a group, usually in February. There's somewhere around a three to one ratio of interviews to offers. So there's 20 slots and uh, it varies from year to year, how many people apply and how many people submit their full application. So some people actually drop out and either miss a deadline or decide not to submit the, the supplementary application. But uh, all those that are confirmed and, and uh, get through the screening process then are offered an interview. And those interviews are all conducted in one week, usually in February, by a team of really well-prepared and, and trained uh, interviewers who want you to be successful. Um, and that's an important take-home message is that, you know, the interviewers are not there to trip you up or, or create conflict. They're there to really, to hear your story to hear why is it that medicine is a good fit for you and why the Alaska program is actually an ideal place for you to do your training. So um, just looking at this first slide, uh, went through the first part. Um, understanding the process makes it less scary. So the more that you can do your background search and look online uh, for various schools and particularly to the UW school, uh, there's some information about interviewing, 
in general, but uh, most of the information for whammy in Alaska is actually at the UW main site. So you go to that UW School of Medicine and Missions program, spend a lot of time there and look at all the resources that they bring up. There's a wealth of information there, including videos that show you uh, what they're looking for for interviews. Um, next slide. <clears throat> when you're interviewed, uh, you will be given a specific time slot, and on the day of your interview, you'll be introduced to your three interviewers. Um, during that day, we also give you an ex uh, a, a little more information about the program itself. So Dr. Young will be there, some students will be there. We let the students actually chat with you one-on-one -on -one so that there's not other faculty or, or uh, uh, administrative folks present. Um, some of you may already know students who are in the program, and that's always a good resource. Um, it, the interview itself will be a specific 30 minute period of time, and there will be three interviewers. One will be what they call XCOM, who is the person that sort of is your advocate and knows all the information of your application. And there are two other people that are referred to as ADCOM members. They're often Alaskan physicians uh, or can be from the public. Uh, currently, Alaska has not had a student on their admissions committee, but that has been done at UW in the past. Um, and, and the ADCOM members do not know your GPA and don't know your MCAT score. Uh, so they don't know the academics, but they do know your personal statement and they know uh, what your clinical exposure is. They know what your service experience is um, and any leadership or research, anything that you've revealed in the application outside of your GPA or MCAT, those individuals know that prior to your uh, interview. And believe me, they've done their homework uh, because they wanna make the best uh, value for the 30 minutes that they get one-on-one -on -one with you to understand fully who you are and what you bring to, to the program. Because uh, we're looking for physicians for Alaska that wanna stay in Alaska, don't have to do primary care. You can do whatever specialty you're interested in and you don't need to know what your specialty is going to be by the time you get done because this is a journey. So um, that committee makeup gets determined uh, specifically for you for people who do not know you. So if you happen to know someone who is on the admissions committee, that they will not be the person interviewing you because we try to make that blinded so that there's not prejudices or, or biases uh, for the individuals. If you by chance interviewed once already and are coming back as a second applicant, uh, those individuals are not interviewed by the same group, it's a fresh group. So we really try to get fresh eyes on the applicants and be able to have the opportunity to really uh, dig in and understand who you are and what your story is. Next slide. So how do you prepare for an interview? Um, you know, there are all kinds of ways to prepare for interviewing in public speaking from your basic course in communications in college to on screen, you know, presentations and other formats. Um, some people belong to Toastmasters, which is a, a presentation skill club. There's all kinds of ways to prepare, but you really need to know your application cold as well. You know what it is that you revealed in your, inter in your um, uh, personal statement. Uh, you know, you of course probably know what your academics are, uh, but, but also if there's anything new that since you submitted your application that you've accomplished that you were not able to submit because of the hard stop for the AMCAS information, you can include that as part of your interview. There's a lot of us that are uncomfortable uh, is with public speaking. Some of us um, you know, don't know how to express ourselves clearly uh, in certain ways, especially when we're nervous. Those are things to practice. Uh, you're not expected to be an expert. You're expected to be honest and truthful and able to um, speak clearly about who you are and why this is a good career fit for you. Next slide. So as, as, as Stella shared with you, these are some of the areas that are um, a focus area for the interviewers in terms of assessing uh, the interview component of the application. So what is your motivation? You know, why is it that being a doctor is a great career focus for you? Um, what brought, what's your journey? What brought you to this point? Um, how well can you communicate that? 
Can you can you uh, tell uh, 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 an uh, enlightening story of who you are that helps communicate why this is a good fit? Um, are you able to be empathetic? Are you able to think on your feet? Are you able to express uh, a knowledge of the field of medicine, not as a clinician, but as an exposure to that profession in general? Um, and, and probably a biggest big part of medicine is about problem solving. So can you do analytical thinking? Um, if you were to be given a a scenario, a role play, uh, and ask how would you respond, can you think on your feet and put together a more comprehensive response than you know, short answers to that particular scenario? Next slide. So what are the expectations for this committee uh, when they're interviewing you? Um, they are not there to trip you up. Um, and I know that that's probably what the rumor mill might say interviews are all about, but no, that is not at the University of Washington what the, the goal is of the interview. Uh, it is really to get to know you better, to understand how you handle yourself, uh, what your experiential background is, uh, how, how deeply you've thought about the role of a physician and the journey that you're looking to embark upon. Uh, do you know what the pros and cons of the role of a physician is? Um, because there are some cons. With any profession, there are things that may not suit your personality or may be difficult to handle. And do you have a plan to address those things? Um, in some cases, people can get into a, a more detailed uh, response to a question. You may be uh, asked to, to stop at that point because the, the committee has a, a series of things they're trying to explore, and they want to make sure they give you enough time to explore all of them. So if that were to happen in an interview for you, don't take it personally. It doesn't mean that you uh, have been judged because of your response. They're merely trying to make sure they have, within their time commitments, the ability to get to all the, the components of the interview. At the end of the interview, uh, you know, you may have been asked to, to do a role play, which this last year we did not do, uh, but in general, the University of Washington has given scenarios and had students respond. Um, but at the end of the, the, the uh, interview process, you may be given an opportunity to either share something that you wanted to make sure to emphasize or to explore something that did not come out in the interview. Um, and some people take, take advantage of this and some don't, but the majority of the interview crew will ask you uh, if you had anything else you wanted to bring forward. So what can you demonstrate about yourself when you interview? Um, you know, it, how you give answers will help the committee to understand more about who you are. Um, that might be about your, your upbringing. It might be about your, the culture you grew up in. Uh, but it also might be about where your passions are. Uh, and believe me, it doesn't, you can have a passion to be a radiologist or a passion to be a pediatrician. That's not what the committee is looking for. We're not trying to, to put people into certain career slots. We're a workforce organization trying to train Alaskans future physicians. And we have needs for everyone. So uh, this is basically the purpose. It, it, it's okay if you really desire to be an emergency medicine physician. We might give you some feedback about uh, where the areas of shortage are. But uh, in general, uh, we need all kinds of physicians. How can you show us that you would enjoy being a doctor? What are, what are the joys of the, of the profession and what are the challenges? Um, do you have a realistic understanding of what being a doctor is all about? Um, what made you embark on this journey? And uh, where do you see yourself practicing? Um, it's very common that the first question you get in the interview is, uh, why do you want to be a doctor? You know, just a, a solid response of why is it that you want to be a doctor? Um, and particularly with the University of Washington and because of the great diversity in Alaska, we really want to make sure that the social determinants of health and the influences that may affect the health and well-being of Alaskans are things that you've had some thoughts about at, that you've explored. Um, you don't need to be an expert, um, but, but what are the things that affect people's ability to remain healthy and live a, a high-quality life? Um, you know, I think COVID this year has 
has brought forth a lot of interesting conversations about that. Um, you know, are you able to listen and dialogue in, a, in an active listening role uh, and engage uh, in a conversation with, with your interviewers rather than just one or two word answers? So those are some of the things you could demonstrate uh, as you're being interviewed. This page is a, a list of resources. Uh, and I, I want to point out in the middle, uh, Dr. Leanna Musquiz is the uh, Dean for Admissions for the University of Washington. And there's some excellent videos where she talks online about uh, you know, what they're looking for uh, in general through the University of Washington. And then Alaska specifically is looking for people that really have solid ties to Alaska and are likely to come back to Alaska to practice. With that, I'd like to know if there's any chat questions that we should respond to. Um, oh, you! it looks like you might see it, but um, one question did just come up, Barb. Um, what is your advice for where to take the interview online? That's a great question. Um, a couple of basics. First, a place with excellent internet. Um, I have done interviews uh, for students that were doing away rotations in Kathmandu, and that was difficult. <laughs> you don't want to risk the quality of your interview by not having good internet access. So that's probably the number one. Uh, that it, it doesn't matter otherwise if it's an online interview. If it's an if it's a face-to-face -face interview, it will be in Anchorage. Uh, on, on campus. And I believe this next year is likely to be online again. Uh, maybe Dr. Young knows for sure, but I believe we will be probably doing virtual rather than face-to-face than -face interviews again this year. Um, other things to consider is, you know, background noise, it's basically the professionalism of using uh, an online format. Uh, do you have you know, do you have your, your microwave in the background as I do? Is that good or bad? <laughs> Could you, uh, you know, do, is your animal in the house uh, secured so that they're not going to interview the conversation? Um, any of those professional things to think about. Um, as far as, there's a question about making connections in the professional field. Um, I want to say uh, that uh, that's a great question. And I think if you reach out to the WAMI office, uh, we have pre-med advisors uh, at UAA that will also serve anyone who's looking to uh, apply to, to the WAMI program in Alaska. Um, you may be at an institution outside of Alaska for undergrad. They're a great resource to get you exposure as well. Um, there are pre-med advisors uh, in most institutions. And I remember when I went through, I was scared to talk to them because then I had to admit that I was thinking about applying to medical school. <laughs> and probably that's not the best approach. Uh, it's probably better to admit upfront that you're just exploring and find out what they have to offer. Uh, it's much less intimidating if you have the power of knowledge. Um, other connection ideas, Dr. Young, do you have thoughts? That's where we usually send people is back to your own primary care physician um, or whoever you're receiving care from or your family's received care from um, is probably a good person to start with. Any connections you have um, through nursing or other connections with the hospital um, are good people to reach out to as well. The medical staff office of most hospitals ha often has a volunteer program. If you're in a community that you're not familiar with that hospital, put a call in to the medical staff office and find out if they have a volunteer program or if they have some connections with some of the um, offsite private practices that might be willing to take or take a, a student for shadowing. Um, they usually get those questions frequently and are well prepared to respond. We have a question about uh, the um, classes over this past year. Did WAMI students meet in person? Um, yes and no, <laughs> I'll take that one. Um, so the clinical students were in their um, clinical programs, I think from what, June onward, Dr. Doty? Mm -hmm. um, the 
uh, foundation students, we've done a sort of hybrid model for a lot of the lecture content and some of the small group content they have been online. Um, we're about to bring them back um, in person for small group for those that want to. Um, the clinical piece obviously cannot be done online. And so that has been done in person um, starting in August, September um, with the new class and with the second year class um, as they came back. When the pandemic started in March, everybody got pulled out of clinicals, at least initially. And that was for patient safety reasons um, as much as anything else. So just specific to COVID, um, we had to shorten our usual six week um, um, primary clinical rotations to four weeks uh, during, the, during the pandemic. Uh, they're back to six weeks now. Um, those are you know, the classic surgery, internal medicine, psychiatry, family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN. Uh, we do 12 weeks of internal medicine rather than six weeks. And that really comprises your what we call patient care phase or third year of medical school. In, uh, as soon as you finish step one uh, exams, which are uh, given in the, in the uh, end of the second year, which are between December and March, uh, following that time, we start the clinical rotations. And uh, as you may know, in the WAMI program, those clinical rotations can be primarily focused in Alaska, at the Alaska uh, called the Alaska track, not all in Anchorage, but primarily in Alaska or can be uh, what we call safari, which is where you wander around the system, um, but, but express your uh, interest and your preferences in terms of where you do certain rotations. We fondly referred to that as working with your whamily, which is your whammy family. 